This car might be the biggest piece of I've ever bought. This R32 came into our lives as a bargain, a steal at $3,000. Little did we know it was harboring a Pandora's box of automotive nightmares. When I bought this car, we knew it was a little rough on the outside and had a bad transmission. While replacing the trans, we found a hole in the block from a bolt that was too long. Since we had it apart, we double checked and found the timing chains, while new, were out of time. We then replaced our bad PCV valve inside the valve cover and completed our first transmission installation. Our first test drive was a disaster, stuck in first gear and spewing transmission fluid into the cooling system. So transmission number three joined the party. But mechanical malfunctions weren't the only demons haunting this car. Stripped bolts, broken electrical connectors, and loose brake calipers added insult to injury. Today, we're once again diving into this beauty, or should I say power steering demon that's been haunting my dreams for months now. When we were picking this car from Florida, I said this. It's safe to assume the power steering has not been improved at all. And four months later, with thousands of dollars of mods, it's still broken. Normally when something goes bad on a car, you take that part and you replace it, and then it fixes your problem. But not us. We started with a used power steering rack first. We also replaced the fuse on this fuse panel. Now the used rack we put in there was because somebody had one laying around and we were gonna have the trans out, so we just threw it in while we were in there. When it didn't fix my problem, I actually had to properly diagnose this car. We had to check the wires from the inside of the engine bay into the car. Those were all good too. Everything had power, everything had ground. The wiring was perfect. But this car, no talky talky to this module. This car, no talky. This is a 519 module, also known as a body control module. These would do weird things on Mark 5s and Mark 6s when they go bad. They don't control anything in the power steering system at all, actually. So I plugged another one in from another car and all of a sudden talky talky. But when that happened, we had this harness that Jake from P3 sent us and a new steering rack already on the car. So what that like means is that the harness is bad and the 59T module is bad, but I'm tired of going in and out with this nonsense. I'm gonna put this harness that I know fixes it and that rack that I also know fixes it in this car so it fixes it. Watch, okay, here, watch, watch this flex. You look, you see that? I'm not even sweating to turn the steering wheel. That's fancy. People have been waiting for a new video. I know. They're like, they're like, what have you been doing all this time? What have you been doing all this time? I don't know, f***ing working at my desk, diagnosing this f***ing car over and over and over again. Now, if you remember when we bought this car and you go to try to close the door, it pulls off like that. So you could snap it down, but it would just pull right back off because this is broken. So this is actually the piece inside the door handle. The rest of the part is gone. See how that went? I see. Oh. You see how it used to go? You see how it doesn't go anymore? This is technically the wrong color because it's like anthracite. This is like a gray and the correct one's discontinued. I'm just happy that we can have something we can grab onto. I really don't give a <laughs> shit about the color. This is a modified grab handle for, uh, we're going to fix that. Uh, here we go. Door seal off. By the way, I found quite a bit of beach sand inside of here. Oh, it's glued to the windshield it literally never ends it's like are you kidding me the a pillar trim is glued to the windshield it's glued to the windshield it's not even a surprise anymore at this point it's just like oh there's another thing that happened and away we go now usually what you're going to do is try to figure out make sure you know exactly where each piece goes but for us, we're always going to have a memorabilia to locate exactly where this piece was. It was right here. Now, this is a door seal that I picked up from a gentleman by the name of Davis. So he was so nice that he kindly sent me this. He parts out cars. And uh, so thanks, Davis. I'm going to start in the corner here since that's where we know it for sure belongs. It's actually really easy once you take the pillar trims off and everything. Um, it's a little bit more difficult when your A pillar is glued to, glued to the car. But when these things are used like this, it actually goes on pretty easily. When these are new, like brand new in, in, out of the, the bag from Volkswagen, these are really tight and hard to get on um, because like the thing hasn't been spread open yet. Not even any lube either. My policy is always lube. Because this car has done it to me, we're going in dry. <laughs> <laughs> I put this CarPlay radio in because I'm really bougie and I don't like not nice radios. It's, I wouldn't call this nice, but it has CarPlay. 
and I like being able to navigate to my to my destinations. The first thing that happens when you turn on this radio, you get one of two things that happen. You're either listening to Hotel California on a dark desert highway or a Chinese song about fairies. You want to enjoy it? <laughs> Where did you buy this radio? Dude, I China, China, China .com. <laughs> if you need to do some calculating while you're while you're driving, you can just boop calculator, calculate things, boop boop boop. And calculate how much money you <laughs> lost. On this car. I mean, the Chinese classic, Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty standard for something of this age. Is I touch this and it just like boop. Yeah, it's, it's been off before. Yeah, that's gone. Never coming back. Yeah, it's gonna rattle a bunch. I'm gonna hit and be like, and it's like. Our friends at P3 Cars, uh, my boy Jake. So Jake actually sent me that steering harness. He also sent me a P3 gauge, so I can be a fancy P3 boy. I'm gonna install it. It's super easy to install, so you can buy them like with the vent or without the vent. Uh, he sent me with the vent because I guess he likes me enough and says you've done enough hating of yourself on this car. This is gonna be one of the nicest things in the interior of this car. <laughs> it's gonna feel real out of place. Thanks, Jake. This is if you wanted to like custom signals of some kinds that you can get additional signals into your gauge. We don't need that because I'm not doing that. All we gotta do, plug her in right here like this. And then this is our OE2 port. And this guy just plugs on in to right here. Just like, just like so. All right, look at it go. So uh, when you start it up, it's like reading the car and it like finds its home. Well, that's probably a zero to 60 timer. Boost There's gauge. boost. We don't have boost on this car, not yet. Coolant temp. So if we wanted to monitor our coolant temp. Speed, so when the speedometer breaks, hopefully you can still use this. <laughs> Battery voltage, make sure you're charging. See, alternator, charging. <laughs> Where can you buy one of you these? You can buy one of these at shopdap.com uh, or on P3's website, either one. Preferably shopdap.com though, where you can buy everything all your, for all your Volkswagen needs, but especially P3 gauges because they're real nice. Don't look around the rest of this. Just look at, <laughs> just look right there. This is gonna be my new song. Whenever I feel the rage of the problems of this car, I'm just gonna... I actually don't know what this is. It's like... Son of a do you know what this is? Do you, do you do this? What is it? This clown was was given as a gift at a white elephant party probably about four years ago now. Uh, and it moves around the office into different places. And somebody taped it inside of a Volkswagen, <laughs> a Volkswagen box and put it inside this mother car. <laughs> It wasn't me. It, I promise it wasn't It me. wasn't Nathan, apparently, but somebody <laughs> did this. And I'm gonna shove this clown up there. Yeah! This is a bumper from Bryson. Uh, we made a video with him recently. There's an aftermarket grill in the center and a white bumper cover. Am I doing my best work right now? It, no, is it late? Yeah. Today's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Instead of buying one of these cars, just play mindless games on the internet. I promise your life will be better than mine. Look at this car. <laughs> 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 Pretty good, huh? So after months of working on this car, we're ready to actually make it look like something and not a mismatched, peeling, flaking pile of junk. Now we could repaint this car and make it really nice looking, but the challenge is all the damage to the body of this car. This door right here is creased. This rear quarter panel has a crease in it right here. There's a massive dent in the roof right here, or dents like this one. All of that adds up to a lot of repair costs, which would make fixing that car and making it really nice very difficult. So we worked with Ethan at 8380 to help us design a really cool wrap for the car. Two major problems we have to address before we have this car wrapped by Nick from Wrap Guy Studio. All the peeling paint on this car presents a major issue with adhesion of wrap to it. So we have to sand all the peeling spots smooth to make sure that Nick has a good surface to adhere his wrap to. 
So all the rock chips on this car had to be sanded down smooth. And that means you have to take it down to almost primer so that you don't feel the rock chip because that will transmit through the vinyl. But with this area, because this is just clear coat peeling, we really just need to take this edge that's really ugly and harsh, smooth it out, and it won't allow this to pull through into the vinyl as well. All you detailers or paint guys in the comments are probably going crazy about how I'm doing something so stupid. Uh, I probably am, to be clear. Uh, but I'm doing my best, guys. This is the best I got. You leave the comments because you're gonna do it anyway, but like, you know, that's why. So here it is. You thought this car couldn't get worse, but... Uh, I wet sanded this car primarily so that we didn't have to worry about making dust all over our warehouse because uh, you don't want pink paint particles all over your parts. So uh, I don't want them on our shelves. I did it wet, it made a mess. We're gonna go clean all the mess off. Oh, don't worry about that. We may get pulled over because somebody thinks we just hit somebody and murdered them. <laughs> this windshield looks like it's just splattered with blood. Anyone that sees this car that drives by is- They're gonna be like, what <laughs> is that? Is that a 240SX? I didn't know they made Volkswagen 240SXs <laughs> between the blood splatter and the uh, and then the different colored bumper cover. It's a real one-two <laughs> combo. I feel like a pre-soak's really needed on this thing. By the way, this car well, hasn't been cleaned when we got it and since we got it. So this is the first time it's being cleaned ever in probably two years. That's pretty cool, right? After cleaning up this car, we have a few things we have to button up. The heat and air conditioning never worked on this car. What we found is that the blower motor was bad. So Chase from our shop replaced it with a nice new one. Now the cooling system in this car is still filled with transmission oil from our problem with our previous trans, which means Chase has to flush this cooling system out. Unfortunately, that takes time and time again until you finally have a clean cooling system. But what's not clean on this car is the interior. If you remember, we picked this car up in Florida. It had been sitting for a while. Curtis from our warehouse helped us out with getting this thing unnastified and he cleaned up the passenger side floorboard that smelled disgusting on the floorboard. Disgusting, it was bleh, uh, bleh. The last step to get this car finished is to get it wrapped. Nick, who did our wrap on our Jetta from Wrap Guy Studio is also wrapping this car that's four hours away in Tennessee. The only problem with that is after the first real test drive of this car of long distance, we have a transmission fault. Now what that means is that we have to diagnose the transmission problem later on, assuming we get to Nick's and then get the car back. Okay, so we're two hours in. We are mountain climbing right now. And uh, our check engine light was just flashing and the um, car was kind of bucking. Uh, I did realize during this drive that I never replaced the spark plugs, which is almost for sure why it's misfiring. Did you, I, did you buy any coils and spark plugs? I didn't. Yeah, all didn't do any of that are yet. definitely happening sometime. I haven't done anything yet. Nathan did ask me and I was like, no, we're not doing that. We, the car doesn't even run right yet. Guess what? We never did it. Wait, did we bring any tools? Oh no, I didn't bring any tools. Oh. We're riding with the angels. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It, it stopped misfiring, so it's really only under load. So the trans is not acting up at this time. 20 minutes later. Okay, so right now we came to go pee. PRNDS is flashing and it will, will not go in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're here. I can't believe we're here. Oh, oh the third transmission. Did you try turning it off and turning it back on? That's again? what I'm doing right now. So we're going to let it sit for, I'm going to arm the alarm, let the modules go to sleep, and then we'll f try again. Okay, so we started out with one fault for the input speed sensor. Now we have a pressure control valve, open circuit, short to ground, clutch temp monitoring, electrical error in circuit, and then a solenoid valve supply voltage error. So we're gonna erase them and hope they go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. No. Push, 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 push. Good thing you're powerful, Nathan. Great job, Nathan. Great job. 
No, it's not gonna go on a drive. Well, oh. it's go. It's going forwards. The question is, will it get out of first gear? <laughs> We're gonna get our food first at Chick-fil-A and <laughs> figure it out. That way, at least if we're sitting on the side of the road, we won't be hungry. Uh, this feels familiar. First gear. That feels real familiar being stuck in first gear. Uh, we're hoping to let it cool down and maybe it'll get out of first gear. If not, Nick said he will come pick us up with a truck and trailer uh, to save our from this piece of We're gonna call Nick and we're gonna say, hey Nick, can we cash in on that IOU of the truck and trailer <laughs> situation? I'll write it on the title of this car and hand it to him. Thanks guys. Yeah. The pickup Paul option's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Alec at 1024 Performance and Nick again for coordinating, helping us get this car picked up and delivered to his shop. Of course, Nick started by having to push the car inside because again, transmission is broken. He got it up in the air and they started disassembling all the doors, trunk, bumpers to get the car cleaned up and ready for our wrap. So Nick's had this car about a week now. It still doesn't drive. Uh, so we're gonna tow it back. But first, let's go check out how it looks. Housekeeping. Yeah, don't don't worry. The fact there's a solar eclipse in the next 24 minutes. You guys smell the I can't. I do smell the the glue though. <laughs> wow. That thing looks so cool. That looks awesome. I can't even believe it's the same piece of sh we brought you. <laughs> <laughs> Now that this car is back at our shop, we get it towed inside to get the transmission fixed again. We determined that the mech unit on this transmission was bad. So we pulled the old one out and went to swap it with a good mech unit. While we had this out, we also replaced the speed sensor from the old transmission because we're collecting so many transmissions. We have so many spare parts from transmissions. New mech unit in. And wouldn't you know it after all that, it drives and it works, but it still has got a transmission speed sensor fault. Would you look at that? And so we're off to Wookiees in the Woods with the R30 Poo and the Jetta. We'll see you there. So I have uh, Volkswagen Audi specialty shops. Uh, we have access to all information, wiring diagrams, factory scan tools, etc. And it took me a very long time to figure out this problem, which means if you bought this car, you would be absolutely fucked. What about the people in the comments that to say that this happened to them and that this is a common problem? <laughs> this is not a, <laughs> uh, these do do weird things when they go bad sometimes and they have weird issues. Uh, and I know you're probably asking like, how did this go bad to cause that to go bad? I have no idea. I don't know. Some kind of weird signal that's back feeding into something is making another module just not able to communicate. Uh, I checked everything. I checked, I had somebody, Bryson, who we made a video on with his Mark V R32. He sent me all the coding of a bunch of modules in his car because I was afraid that the previous guy jammed in a bunch of wrong coding and made things not talk to each other. I was worried about that didn't fix it. You know what fixed it? This piece of module. That's what fixed it. And then that's what I'm gonna 